Town Hall. Today we'll spend some time sharing updates on the organizational structure project as well as our strategic plan. Because we continue to hear from you about the hubs via your questions submitted in My Ivy, as well as in-person conversations on our campuses, I've asked Alicia Amen to provide specifics on the first hub analysis project focused on finance. Alicia is the Executive Director of Administration for the Evansville and Terre Haute campuses. She's been with Ivy Tech since 2008, first serving as Executive Director for Finance, then moving to Executive Director for Administration, adding facilities and security to her role. Alicia participated in the Organizational Restructure Project that began last winter and now leads the Hubs Analysis Team. While we've discussed Hubs conceptually at each of our virtual town halls, I have asked uh, for Alicia to further pull back the curtain on how that process works and uh, how the hub analysis and finance is coming. So, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to provide more information about the hubs. And as you will notice, Sue referenced the hub analysis team. As we have gone to various campuses and talked to staff about um, hubs, we have heard the concerns regarding what does this mean? Just because an area is listed on the hubs, it does not mean that it's going to become an automatic, shared, or consolidated service. Our hubs analysis team is analyzing. We are analyzing these functional areas for the opportunity of shared and consolidated services. We are trying to figure out how to best use Ivy Tech as a network to support the good work that is happening on all the campuses across the state of Indiana. We believe that there are many opportunities to operate more efficiently in our business practices, in our processes, in the back office. So we could do more for our students and customer care. And when I talk about customer care, that includes students, our own employees, the employers in our community, and community groups. The focus on the hubs analysis team is guided by the purpose. How can we operate more efficiently as a statewide organization to allow us to provide improved student, employee, industry, and community services? You may be wondering, will your roles and responsibilities look different? Honestly, yes, they will. We will likely have less transactional work as it is done now. We will help your campuses be solutions and service oriented as we move through this process. Some of the transactional work may be done at the systems office and it may be done at the campus office supporting all the other campuses across the state. Here's a great example of how the transactional work can be done by one campus serving the rest of the campuses around the state. Our Achieve Your Degree program works directly with employers to connect their staff with opportunities to earn a credential or degree. For those local employers, a campus manages the entire process with the employer including enrollment and tuition reimbursement. However, we have some employers that have employees across the state and want to offer this same educational opportunity for them. For those employers, we have statewide contracts, and they are managed at our Evansville campus. One of the things the Evansville team is able to do to support this service is to process the tuition reimbursement for the statewide contracts. They work closely with your campus Achieve Your Degree coordinators, as well as working closely with the employer. The Evansville team is able to bill the employer with a single bill from Ivy Tech However, the campus is where the student is pursuing their degree will receive the enrollment, the persistence credit, the completion credit, and the tuition. All the while, the Evansville team is providing a seamless service for our statewide employers and only receiving a small fee to help support this service. This is a consolidated hub and how it's functioning today. Allow me to share some specifics about the process we are working through by using the financial hub analysis team as the example. And I can tell you as a campus employee, 
there is not a predetermined outcome. Systems office is not telling us you need to do this or you need to do that. We are truly working through this as a collaborative process to make sure that we're hearing all of the best practices that are happening and developing the best future state. We also recognize that it will not be perfect on the initial onset. We will work hard to do everything we can for the best outcome at the end of each hub analysis team. But we will also continue to assess so that as we move through the future state, we can continue to improve and ensure that we are delivering to our students and our customers and being agile to our community, being responsive. Again, the goal of the campus, the goal of the hub services team is to allow the campus to be solutions oriented. So here's the process. First, we identify a functional area. Right now, we're working with finance. We are looking at it from top to bottom. We can't do any part of the finance in a vacuum because of all the interdependencies throughout the functional finance. So we were able to be very intentional and thorough through our analysis. One decision was made to look at finance top to bottom, however, look at payroll and grants separately because we recognize that when you talk about the life of a grant, it is a very close collaboration between foundation and finance to do that. So as we look at that hub, we will have a grant hub team. Further, with payroll, again, HR and finance need to work very closely for that to successfully operate. So when we look at payroll, the hub team will be HR and finance together working on those recommendations. Next, we identify a small group, a core group, that helps make sure the process is moving forward. The small working group includes financial leadership from our, our four campuses and systems office subject matter experts. In addition to the individuals that are listed on this slide, we want to make sure that we are staying within the regulations that we need to stay within. So we have a member of our audit team as part of this team. And they will also help us understand what impacts on the financial management manual this may create with the future state. Further, we have an IT representative who will be on the team throughout so that way we can understand what our system limitations and what is the impact if we need to change the system in some way in order to achieve our future state. Next, we use the simplex process to finalize the scope of the Finance Hub project. This process included subject matter experts from systems office, as well as all of our regional executive directors of finance, because we were still operating under the regional based system at the time. An example throughout the process is that our executive directors of finance continue to have a consistent voice throughout the process. We consult with them on a regular basis because this is finance. They are the subject matter experts from the campus. And we want this to be a collaborative and consensus driven process. Next, our, we went out and we mapped current state. And we chose three campuses to map the current state to get us started. Lafayette had been merged with another region and has a highly experienced team. And we learned a lot from them. Indianapolis, our largest and most complex campus, so we were able to gather how are they able to achieve efficiencies as well as serve our students very well, which they do. And then Valparaiso, we're able to go there because they were receiving all their financial administration under a shared regional service model. So as of yesterday, we completed these maps. And the next step is to have those campuses review those maps, make sure we've captured everything correctly so that we can move to the next step. Our next step is going back to the small work group with these current process maps. We are also creating a task list from these maps, which will go to all of the EDFs across the state so that they can review it and make sure we are addressing everything in that list, that we are identifying the unique things happening at the different campuses. They will also add context to these current process maps so that we understand the amount of time and effort of our staff in order to achieve what we have mapped in the current process. 
Meanwhile, we are also looking at other organizations, other colleges and universities to understand what do they do. We are also looking at companies to understand how do they manage large, complex, even global financial systems and organizations. We are also pulling references from NACUBO, the National Association of College and University Business Officers, which has a lot of studies that we can gain information from. Taking all of this material, adding context to all the current state maps, and bringing this all back to the subject matter experts, the small group will start formulating a future state, September 18th, is when we will start the process. Once we have developed the future state, again, we will take it back to the executive directors of finance, the business office directors, and our chancellors to get their feedback on this future state and help form it again to the best possible outcome for Ivy Tech as a full system that supports the services at our campuses. Once the future state has been finalized, the hub team will transition all of that information to the financial implementation team. And there are members of the implementation team on our hub, hub team, so there's a seamless transition and they understand all the intent and work that went into this. We don't have a hard deadline for this. We are working to finalize a future state model that will work, and we hope to have a suggested future state by the end of the calendar year. The financial implementation team will determine the best timeline for implementing that future state across the campuses. We don't have a hard deadline because our priority is getting it right. We will work towards the best possible outcome. The process I've outlined is the same process we're going to use for each of the functional hubs. We want to make sure we are involving campus and systems office subject matter experts, that we're considering all of the options, and that we are always transparent and share the progress and the decisions as they're made. So I know there's a lot of anxiety around this. I know the big question is, what about my future role with Ivy Tech? I also know in working with many of you that we all care about Ivy Tech. The reason why we are here is because we have passion for our communities and the change we are making in them. Personally, my husband's an alum of Ivy Tech. Two of my children are attending Ivy Tech. So I am personally invested that we have the best possible Ivy Tech going forward, using our resources the best we can to best serve our communities. So I appreciate the opportunity to be a part of the process for this reorganization. And I know my job will be completely different. My role will be completely different in the future as we move into the new future state. However, it is rewarding to be able to help this organization grow and continue the broad impact we have on our community. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Alicia. That was very, very helpful. We appreciate your commitment to this project, including all the traveling I know you're doing from Evansville and across the state. I hope to all those that are watching that the details shared by Alicia today really provide some comfort and assurance about how we're going about this process in a very thoughtful way and that the people involved are committed to finding the best outcome for Ivy Tech at all levels, for our communities, for our campuses, and statewide as well. Over the past month, we've also had some significant decisions that have been made in the organizational structure in our academic area. To share those developments, I'd like to welcome Provost Steve Tincher. Thank you, Sue, and good afternoon. The move to a campus structure means Ivy Tech will no longer have a regional academic officer committee. The last REOC uh, meeting was earlier this month. I want to recognize the significant role that this committee has had in advancing the curricula, the transfer mission, and the academic position of the college. With the restructure, the 19 campus academic officers will comprise the new Campus Academic Officer Council, CAOC. One of the robust discussions at the August REOC meeting 
was around a change in the curriculum approval process going forward. The RAOC unanimously approved a motion for curriculum committees to have curriculum approval with a check and balance in place at the system's office. This will further affirm the role of faculty as substantially having oversight of the curriculum as an assumed accreditation practice. Additionally, this is a pivotal decision and item as the academic restructure proceeds and it promotes a more strategic focus for the CAOC. The slide represents a general, the general focus areas for the Campus Academic Officer Council. And these will be discussed and reviewed and refined at the, September, at the first CAOC meeting in September. The areas include academic initiatives linking with and from the strategic plan, ensuring academic integrity, accreditation, both HLC and program accreditations, student success initiatives, academic policy, workforce alignment, academic and instructional innovation, and promoting the student academic experience. Again, I want to uh, recognize and acknowledge the importance of the instrumental work done by the RAOC toward academic advancement of the college. And I am very encouraged going forward with the new perspectives and refined purpose for the Campus Academic Officer Committee. While we do have more details to determine, we can also relay that we know we'll have an academic workforce alignment systems representative and a school dean providing direct support and, and assistance for the curriculum committees as we go forward. Thanks, Steve, for those updates. Now we'd like to talk a little more about faculty governance and the framework that the organizational restructured team members have developed with this inaugural faculty council that we're implementing this year. So Steve, could you tell us who will be serving on that faculty council? Yes, this slide represents the faculty council membership framework and includes a balanced representation of faculty from the seven schools, which also include the economic sectors. And more than 50% of the membership of the council is expected to be faculty without a program or department chair administrative assignment. And I uh, note also that the curriculum committees are comprised of the program and department chairs. And then also the faculty council is expected to have re uh, representation from the adjunct faculty. For this inaugural year, to ensure the faculty council gets going quickly, we have identified specific representation. Recipients of the 2017 Regional President's Award for Excellence in Instruction will be offered the opportunity to represent their campus on the new council. The remaining five campuses, Lake County, Anderson, Madison, Marion, and Michigan City, will forward nominations identified by deans and vice chancellors of academic affairs and campus chancellors. If there are any vacancies from the recipients of the President Award winners, or if someone decides not to accept that appointment, those campuses will follow the same process as the remaining five campuses. Additionally, as members of the faculty council work team from our current organizational structure project, Leanna Melham and Rebecca Reschulte will be members of the 2017-18 inaugural faculty council. They will be the bridge between the organizational structure team and the inaugural faculty council. And because we want to have and ensure adjunct faculty representation on the council as well, the 2017 adjunct faculty recipient of the Gerald Lampkin Award for Excellence in Instruction, Aaron um, Rubenstein, will be offered a membership on the 2017-18 faculty council. If Aaron decides that that is not an appointment that he would like to accept, then the appointment will be offered to another recipient of the 2017 Adjunct Faculty Award for Excellence in Instruction. The selection process will be, will be coordinated by Leanna and Rebecca in consultation with President Elsterman and myself. Thanks, Steve. So can we talk a little bit more about the roles and responsibilities of that faculty council? Yes, the faculty council will serve as the voice of the faculty on academic opportunities and issues, consultation with the president and provost. The faculty council will also own a strategic initiative from the strategic plan and the applicable metrics associated with that initiative. 
and that will also focus on faculty professional development. The president and provost will attend meetings periodically. In addition, the faculty council will own the Glenn Sample Award for Excellence in Instruction dinner and day event, define their sustainable purpose, operational and define their operational framework and appointment process, again, in consultation with President Elsperman. Additionally, identifying areas for proactive focus and report out periodically to the state trustees. Thank you, Steve. We're very excited about standing up that faculty council. So now let's move on and, and uh, thank first those who worked with the faculty council as we recognize Linnea Malham, who is Associate Professor of Health Sciences at the Muncie campus, Rebecca Rayshalty, Interim Chancellor at Madison campus, and Dean, Dean of Arts, Sciences, and Education, and Corey Klossman ryan Assistant VP of Student Success. All have been very instrumental in helping us to stand up this faculty council. So I'm going to change gears now and talk about one of the questions that came up after our first virtual town hall, which was about the strategic plan and why we were conducting the organizational structure project ahead of the strategic plan. As I've said, I heard you all loud and clear last summer when you told me about the friction in organizational structure that really couldn't wait to be resolved until after we completed the strategic plan at the end of this year. Additionally, realize that the work of the organizational structure team really helped inform our strategic planning process. These two things were working in concert. I think you'll see today as I share some of the high-level information about that strategic plan that in fact the projects were not done in isolation but really moved together uh, in a good way to develop this year and I want to stress that what you'll see today still is a draft I've called it the wet cement version uh, first I want to talk about our methodology in developing the strategic plan we started with focus groups with more than 2,000 individuals from across the state the focus groups included faculty staff students employers and a variety of community stakeholders we incorporate, incorporated data from existing reports and other processes underway internally, like the organizational redesign, the ASPEN report, workforce alignment studies, the foundation feasibility study, and many more. After gathering that data, we utilized the Simplex process to develop some overarching goals and objectives. The President's Advisory Board, Executive Council, and cross-functional work teams have worked very diligently to define the strategies. And I would like to take time to thank all of those who participated uh, and have really uh, brought this strategic plan to this point. Your input was invaluable, and we hope that you will see your feedback reflected in the draft of the plan. Strategic planning allows us to step back from our day-to-day, -day, the things we do each day, and to establish a clear vision for where we want to go as an organization. A critical step uh, in strategic planning was working to establish our vision, our mission, and our core values. Our vision really defines where we are going as an organization. Think of it as our true north. It's also, though, measurable, and it should be something that's challenging but realistic, something that uh, we see as achievable. Ivy Tech is truly Indiana's lead partner uh, if we're going to ensure we as a state achieve 60% of our workforce having post-secondary degrees or credentials by 2025. Together, we are working as a unified team now towards our vision. So our vision, as you see, is for Ivy Tech Community College students to earn 50,000 high quality certifications, certificates, and degrees each year aligned with the needs of our workforce. Next, our mission defines our primary purpose and our work. At Ivy Tech, we are aligned around a powerful new mission which defines who we are, who we serve, and what we make possible. So let me read it with you. We are Ivy Tech, Indiana's community college. We serve the people of our state through accessible and affordable world-class education and adaptive learning. We empower our students to achieve their career and transfer aspirations. And we embrace our vision of economic transformation inspired by the education and earnings attainment of our citizens, the vitality of our workforce, and the prosperity of our unique and diverse communities. 
Our core values are also critical. They guide how we do our work, how we interact with others, how we hire, and how we serve our students. We received hundreds of recommendations for our core values, which inspire us. In the end, we clearly unified around these core values, student-centered, outcomes-driven, inclusive, collaborative, trustworthy, and transparent. So now, I'm going to move into our goals. We established seven in all. For each of those seven goals established, internal teams at Ivy Tech worked to identify and prioritize goal statements, strategies, and tactics. And it's important to know there's an alignment all the way from our vision, our mission, to our goals. Hundreds of strategies and tactics were explored throughout a four-month process, and nearly 100 sets of eyes have been part of developing it to this point. So now I'd like to share with you a bit more about the goals that were ultimately prioritized. The first is goal one. It is all about student success, laser focused on helping our students succeed, ensuring every student persists towards their educational objective. Goal two is focused on recruitment and enrollment. Recruiting and enrolling Hoosiers from every demographic into high demand, high wage career pathways. Goal three is all focused on completion. Students earning those 50,000 high quality certificate certifications and degrees annually. Goal four is focused on workforce. That our students will be placed into and succeed in those high demand, high wage jobs. Goal five is really all about you, our employees. We want to be known as a great place to work. Goal six is a financial goal. Yes, we need one of these, ensuring Ivy Tech has sufficient financial resources to achieve our mission. And goal seven is our community goal. It's about effectively engaging with and serving our unique communities. We have also drafted the strategies and tactics and metrics for consideration with each goal. Rather than share all of those with you today, I wanted to give you an overview of the seven goals and encourage you to review that draft strategic plan document yourself. You can find those details, as you can see here on my Ivy, on the employee dashboard, along with, and this is important, a way for you to provide your feedback to us. Let me say that last week we shared the first draft of the strategic plan with about 1,300 faculty members during discipline dialogue days. That was very helpful. They provided wonderful feedback. We're also visiting each campus between now and mid-September to gain more input college-wide. Statewide functional teams will also have that opportunity to provide feedback uh, during the, the uh, strategic planning team's meetings. And we will attend those meetings to present the draft plan and solicit feedback. The information shared today is just a snapshot of the hundreds of hours of work our staff, faculty, and stakeholders have spent over the last months to chart our direction. Their work has helped us develop a strong vision, a mission, core values, and strategic direction that will take this institution forward for years uh, coming. After vetting the plan and making adjustments, we will create a comprehensive implementation plan, putting targets on our metrics and continually measuring our progress towards achieving these goals. Again, we value your input as we take on this critical step of defining Ivy Tech's future. Before we conclude the virtual town hall today, I wanted to continue answering more of the questions that you've continued to submit uh, after our and since our last town hall. Steve, I'm going to ask you, will you join as my representative and ask the questions? Yes, be glad to, Sue. Thank you. The first question uh, submitted on my Ivy or in my Ivy is on the slide. The president has indicated that workforce alignment and K-14 initiatives are the top priorities going forward. Why is workforce alignment at the regional cabinet level and the K-14 initiative is not? Well, the K-14 strategy priority, if you will, is very important 
to our institution. Of course, um, we care a lot about that. And as we work towards implementation of the specific plan, we will review the best practices around K-14, and specific tactics are included in our strategy. No, now we have a vice chancellor of enrollment services being named, which we see leading these K-14 efforts going forward and would be considered the K-14 representative on the cabinets as we move forward with the campus structure. We will continue to review, however, what the best way is to represent K-14 in that campus leadership structure. Further, understand that chancellors really do have the opportunity to add a member to their cabinet if they so see that as appropriate. Thank you, Sue. The next question is, when will regions formally become non-existent? Well, we have identified that this really is a year of transition for us. Uh, you will see it with our work together across previously recognized regions and by regions and even multiple building regions, um, we will see how we can adequately and need to adequately serve students through this transition year. So we will work to further define the timeline we will pr and we'll provide updates accordingly. But please note that September 16th is the effective date for the cabinet members to be named across the state with one notable exception. The Executive Director of Operations is yet to be named on any campus, and that's because, as you heard from Alicia, the work of the hubs teams that's underway that may impact the job descriptions for that role. So we aren't able to finalize their job description at this time. Some Chancellor's Cabinets have already been identified and named, and others will be finalized later this month. A statewide communication will go out recognizing the the cabinet members at each campus uh, by mid-September. Also effective September 16th will be, in effect, our transition to the division to schools. And here's the last question for today's uh, town hall session. What is a service area? Will recruitment be constrained to these service areas? If so, how will the state decide the best boundaries for respective campuses and working in these areas, counties, school districts, and et cetera? That's a really good question. Uh, we're going to show the service areas map here that you see, saw earlier in previous town halls and can find uh, updated on my Ivy. Those service areas were in fact developed by our chancellors to provide some guidelines for the general areas by which the campuses would operate and provide clarity around which sites report to which campuses. The expectation is that campuses will work together, just as the regions did, to best serve the entire state. But I would say that service area lines should not be construed as hard lines, but instead guidelines in which to work. For instance, think about an employer who may be interested in a program that's across the service area at another campus. Chancellors should work together to best serve that employer. Students also may take classes across a service area line. Chancellors, campus staff, and faculty, as always, would make the best effort to serve all employers, all students, and communities within those service areas. Again, thank you for spending part of your Friday afternoon with us. With you, I look forward to the beginning of the academic year that is just around the corner starting on Monday. Please continue to send in your questions, and I encourage you to take a look at the draft of our strategic plan on My Ivy and provide your feedback. And please consider joining us again next month at our next virtual town hall on Friday, September 15th as we come upon, upon our first day of the school year. Good luck, I look forward to it, and let's have a great semester together.